Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. I am so excited. You are looking at the Tier 10 British multi-role fighter, the Hawker Hunter, which just became available today. And I have obtained it to feature for you guys. Unfortunately, I have not been able to get it to specialist level as yet, uh, but I will ultimately do so and uh, probably feature it again at that point. So the Hawker Hunter, it is characterized by powerful large caliber armament, effective against aircraft with high survivability. Those are 30 millimeter cannons that it has. Uh, as it is a fighter of sorts, it has low survivability and does have a vulnerable engine. Has high air speed and a long lasting boost. We'll go over that here in a bit. Low effectiveness in maneuvering combats. This thing turns like a cruise ship. <laughs> so kind of, you know, bad in that category. I think I, if I remember correctly, I got it down to uh, 12 seconds on the 360 degree turn we'll go over that in a minute uh, effective in mid-altitude combat and in destroying small amounts of ground targets it's got great ordnance take a look at all those rockets folks and uh, two bombs there see the cannons there underneath all right so Four 30 millimeter cannons, each of which do 330 damage per second with a rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 800 meters, which is pretty good. Quite powerful uh, cannons there. Has uh, two 500 pound bombs, each of which do 5,200 damage within a 75 meter radius. It has 32 rockets each of which do 600 damage within a 30 millimeter radius. And as it says, uh, it uh, launches in groups of four at a time. Stat-wise, its maximum optimal altitude is 1,800 meters. So as it says, it is a medium altitude aircraft. I certainly have gotten it up well above 1,800 meters, and it does okay. Not too bad. Its service ceiling is 4,000 meters. Rate of climb, 159 meters per second. Maneuverability, um, 11.8 seconds with our equipment. That we'll go over here in a minute uh, for the 360 degree turn. So that, you know, the turning rate is not that great. Um, rate of roll, 123 degrees per second. So pretty good on the roll uh, maximum optimal speed 825 kilometers per hour so it is a fast aircraft for sure uh, stall speed 240 kilometers per hour so yeah that's a high stall speed folks so this aircraft is uh, prone to stalling so just be aware of that a cruising speed 523 kilometers per hour boost speed 950 kilometers per hour uh, it's got a 16 second boost 1200 kilometers per hour maximum dive speed accumulative damage for the two 500 pound bombs is 10,400 resupply time on the bombs is 120 seconds Rockets cumulative damage is 19,200 and resupply time on those is 120 seconds as well. So two minutes to get your ordnance back up again. Optimal distance 1,190 meters. Collective damage for the 30 millimeter cannons uh, is 1,320 damage. And again, optimal distance, 800 meters. In terms of equipment for the cockpit, I have slotted a stock gyroscopic sight. Uh, usually I would have more uh, advanced, enhanced, and calibrated equipment on 
the aircraft, but uh, this is just hot off the presses, this aircraft, and uh, just don't have the tokens right now to transfer better equipment onto it. But uh, plus 5% accuracy of forward firing offensive armament with at the cost of minus 3% pilot's resistance to injuries, which we kind of deal with by equipping emergency medical kit, which heals injured crew members and provides resistance to injury for 10 seconds. So if our pilot does get injured, we can uh, get him back up to health ASAP. Our other option would have been the cockpit armor, which would increase crew's resistance to injuries, but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability, since this aircraft already has lackluster maneuverability, I, di I didn't want to make it any worse, for sure. For the airframe, there are two slots for equipment. Of course, we don't get the second slot because we do not have it in the specialist configuration yet. Uh, with the one slot we do have, I have equipped an improved lightweight wing frame, which increases roll maneuverability by 7%, very nice there, and maneuverability in turns by 1.8%. Bonus characteristic of plus 3% wings resistance to critical damage. The negatives are minus 3% aircraft hit points, minus 5.5% wings resistance to critical damage. So basically minus 2.5% uh, when you take into account the plus uh, bonus characteristic. Other options would have been reinforced skin, which would have increased wings and tails resistance to critical damage, but at the cost of aircraft speed. I think uh, this aircraft speed is its greatest defensive measure, so I, I wouldn't want to you know, debuff that at all. A reinforced airframe, which would increase aircraft hit points, but at the cost of maneuverability. Again, maneuverability in this aircraft kind of sucks, so I didn't want to make it worse. And finally, polished skin, which would have increased aircraft speed at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. Now, that's a very viable option if you want to just fully go, you know, zoom and boom with this aircraft. But uh, as you guys know from other aircraft that I have featured, I really like to do as much as I can for maneuverability. But uh, for you zoom and boomers who love that, polished skin would be a very viable option for you. In the engine slot, I have equipped stock lightweight power unit, which increases yaw maneuverability. Ah, who cares? Plus 2%. You know, if anybody yaws, <laughs> let me know. But I, I don't see much use for it, personally. Uh, plus 1% maneuverability in turns. The negative is minus 3% engine's resistance to critical damage. But we have equipped emergency engine restart. So if our engine does get knocked out, we can repair it. Also, uh, with the higher potential for our wings and tail to have critical damage, I did equip secondary control system, which restores controllability of wings and tail. In such a situation. Your other options for the engine would have been engine armor protection which would increase engines resistance to damage but at the cost of aircraft speed. Don't want to lose speed in this aircraft. Uh, combined injection boost system which would increase boost efficiency but at the cost of boost availability. I really want that boost as available as possible so I didn't want to go with that. Finally, uprated engine, which would increase engine thrust, but at the cost of resistance to fire. Again, a very viable option for you zoom and boomers, but I wanted to uh, help this aircraft's maneuverability, so that's why I went with lightweight power unit. But if you went with the uprated engine, not a bad choice there. Do have a slot for the outboard weapon, but uh, only in the specialist configuration. So weren't able to take advantage of that. I do have slotted here uh, fragmentation ammunition, which is uh, best suited for auto cannons. Again, there's a slot for uh, consumables with regard to the outboard weapon, but uh, we don't have a specialist aircraft here, so we didn't get to equip anything there. 
in terms of paint schemes you are currently looking at summer which I think is probably my favorite on this aircraft very nice camo there I like the yellow this is winter desert and marine For pilot skills, I think on this aircraft that going with Marksman 1 is certainly uh, critical. Uh, those 30 millimeter cannons can be tough to hit things sometimes. Uh, Marksman 1 reduces dispersion of forward firing weapons by 5%. Also, if you can get Marksman 2, definitely. I would go with that, reduces dispersion of forward firing weapons by 5% and increases accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%. That's of course cumulative with Marksman 1. Now, ultimately here I spent a lot of skill points on maneuverability uh, with aerodynamics expert which increases the positive effects of our mounted equipment on maneuverability by 40%. So good synergy with there with our chosen equipment. But also I equipped Aerobatics Expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. I had an extra two skill points. If I had had three extra skill points, I, of course, would have gone with Marksman 2. But since I didn't, I just chose Eagle-Eyed and Fire Resistance. But... Uh, Ideally, you want that uh, Marksman 2, and you may choose to forego one of the maneuverability skills uh, so as to get Marksman 2, but of course that's a personal decision. I just really want that extra maneuverability. All right, so let's head into a battle and see how the Hawker Hunter actually performs. All right, so our battle in the Hunter will be over the Alpine Gambit Collision Theater of Operation. So where are we gonna head first? Uh, we will go over to the airfield to the northeast, and then from there, work our way in between the garrison and the military base and Show me what see you which do, is our pilot. best option. Let's roll. Such an awesome looking aircraft, I think. Two down, one to go. Take on this uh, heavy fighter here. Yeah, the 30 millimeters are nice, aren't they? They make quick work of things, that's for sure. All right, so we're kind of head into this area and just maybe we can stop them from taking the uh, garrison. Who knows? What do they have working over here? Oh, multi-roll, huh? BVP. Oh, it would help if I could hit something, wouldn't it? Let's see, is this 
multi-roll coming at us or what? J7W3 up there. And we are at the outer limits of our optimal altitude, so... Let's get down a little bit here, drop some ordnance. Get it all? Yeah. Got a few rockets left here. Guns got us. All right, well, let's go into our airfield over here and then we'll head back to that garrison. Uh, looks like we may have to do, a, to do a little defense here first. Oh, he tried to hit us with rockets. Enemy objects damaged. Here, trying to work on our friendlies. So give them a hand, and let's head back down to our neck of the woods, which is a little lower altitude, and take on this Seahawk. There we go. Airfield secure. And it looks like we've made some inroads into the uh, garrison over here, so let's see if we can finish that off. Maybe our ground attack aircraft will do that. Up ah, there we go. Excellent. What's oh, going on up here? J7W3 and the BBP again. There we go. Took a little bit of work there, but we got it done. We'll side in here, see if that helps us hit something here. Should get him with the fire. There we go. Indeed, that's exactly what happened. Got a heavy fighter coming in here. Hang in there. You'll soon <laughs> got him with the rockets. This thing does have a lot of rockets. We've got two ground attack aircraft coming in on our garrison. So let's see if we can't fend them off. <laughs> yeah, that was close. That's good effort there on his part. One down and one to go. Take care of Bernard here. There we go. 
What's up here? BBP, maybe? J7W3. And we'll use uh, flaps and air brakes here to see if we can cut in on them on the turn here. Got one shot off. Ah. Sometimes with these J7W3s, it's just a challenge just to stay behind them. You can overrun them many times. Let's see if we can get him with a bomb. <laughs> that was close. Alright. Well, they really want this garrison over here, don't they? Let's let our... Uh... Got him with the Rocketeer again. Ah. Oh. All right, well, that's it, folks, for us. I believe we have done all we can here. Does not look like it's going to be enough, though, to turn this around. But, uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't know that we could have done much more there. Let's see what's... Sort of enemy enemy. Well, that's, that's it. They got it. Attention well, good for them. But hey, the Hawker Hunter... Tier 10 British multi-role fighter did a great job there. We've got uh, Guardian, Wing Legend, Flying Guardian Badge, Conqueror, number one spot on the team, three chevrons on the grade rank, Subjugator, Rocketeer, Flames in the Sky, Effective Fire, and Flying Start. So we'll head back to the hangar now and see how we did. Overall. Okay, so 127,251 in currency, 5,194 in experience, 259 in free experience, and one token, which I desperately need. All right, captured two sectors, 16 aerial targets destroyed, so uh, 16 kills there. Uh, two assists, did 8,447 in damaged aerial targets. That's pretty significant. 15,330 in personal points, which was more than the uh, number one player on the winning team. So, yeah, I, you know, again, Hawker Hunter there, beautiful looking aircraft, performed quite well. Love the ordnance, does a great job. Plenty of rockets, as you can see there. Man, that is just loaded, isn't it? That is fun to see and use. All right, well, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and if you get an opportunity to fly the Hawker Hunter, I hope you have great success in it.